Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is episode 7 of Covia season 2 and I'm finally back on YouTube after about 4 months of nothing, no content, not being able to work on YouTube. It's been very sad, I have not enjoyed it. Before I go ahead and talk about all that though, in the background we're building up a little storage facility. The time lapse is only about 3 minutes and then the rest of this video is going to be in real time showing you the stuff I've built whilst I haven't been able to make videos. So the storage facility really is more of a background thing. I mean I could have just put some cinematics in the background but I figured I might as well build build up this stuff and most of the build in is going to be off camera anyway so is there any fun including it probably not but i'm doing it anyway a storage facility is something that i think would actually be pretty important to a zoo obviously you need to put all the decorations in this isn't actually where the food's going to be we're going to have a different staff area it's all a big hodgepodge basically storage facility not the focus of this video but i figured might as well include it because i recorded it and yeah and we're not only going to be talking about planet zoo and covia today because you know I've honestly just got way too much to update you guys on. I've got a lot to talk about when it comes to Snorka Below Zero, the next series, basically what's going to be going on with the channel for the foreseeable future. I can talk. Wow, can you tell I haven't done YouTube in a while? I really cannot speak. And also, can you tell I'm excited because I'm talking really bloody fast? You should be able to tell because I'm really excited to be back. I've missed YouTube so much. But I'm wasting a lot of time. The time life is going to be over in like two minutes. So, where I've been, if you didn't join my Discord, which you should because the Discord is where you're going to get all the updates on whatever's going on on the channel, which won't be in videos, especially in videos outside of Kavir. Kavir is nice because I can kind of just sit here and talk to you guys and rant on like my stupid brain does, but other series I like to kind of keep it more immersive so I don't really get to talk about this stuff. So that goes for Below Zero and Subnautica or whatever whatever else comes next. I don't really talk about what's going on in my real life, so Kovia and the Discord is where I do that stuff. And I've been away because my PC was kind of going to crap. You can kind of see I say kind of, you can really see what was going on with my graphics card in the episode, was it episode 4? I think it was episode 4 where we built the Market Street cinematics at the end. They looked awful. There were so many like video glitches and you could see it quite a lot in the Below Zero series as well. It was just getting progressively worse and it was really bumming me out, especially with Below Zero though, because I'm really wanting to keep that series cinematic that's what I've done with Sonotica before and there was a particular scene where we met Margaret for the first time and her pet Snowstalker jumps out from behind the wall and makes you jump it's like a jump scare and the video glitched on that moment so the entire Snowstalker just looks like squares jumping towards you and it really just that that one in particular is kind of what made me decide you know what I'm just gonna get a new PC I'm just gonna wait to finish the series but that really is the main reason I've been gone I have uh, been really bored. I mean, we've had summer. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm in uni now, actually, but I was in college. But that means I basically have nothing to do over summer, at least nothing work-wise. And I'm weird because I actually quite like doing work, at least when it's work I enjoy, which is exactly what my uni and college courses are. And YouTube, it's, it's work in a way, but I really do enjoy it. So I'd rather have it than not have it. So I decided to order a new PC. It's a lot better than my old one. My old one was about six years old and it cost me maybe a grand when I got it. So you can imagine how much better this PC might be considering I spent like two grand on it and obviously it's brand new. So it should just be way easier for me to record stuff. I might start streaming, but I'm not gonna promise that. <laughs> Streaming's not really my thing. I've done it before in the old channel and I just feel like my uh, style is much better off in videos. And I've just looked at the time of this recording and I've already gone way over the time lapse. So I have no idea what I'm going to put in the background of this now. Maybe some cinematics or something like that. I don't really know. But yes, I am back to YouTube and I'm really excited to work on Covia because I haven't been able to do anything significant. Like I haven't built any new habitats. I have done some work, but I haven't built any new habitats, which is what I've really wanted to do. So I'm definitely going to be working on that and Below Zero alongside it. The hype for Below Zero has kind of died down now. It's not dead, but it's not something that people are going to be really excited to see, so I'm just going to take it easy. I'm not going to go two videos a week like I was doing when it first released. I'm kind of just going to work on Below Zero and Covia whenever I feel like it until both, not both series are done, until Below Zero is done, because uh, Covia is going to go on for bloody ages. It, it's been nearly a year? Well, no it's not really. It's been like six months since we started the series. I think we started in March, something like that. I actually started building it in January though. Um, but that's besides the point. So yeah, I'm just going to work on those two series as whenever I feel like it because blah, 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 because the production process is quite different. For example, with Flow Zero, I have to just sit down and actually record a couple hours for a couple episodes of my gameplay. And I have to be talking that entire time, which basically means I have to be at home on my own, which isn't happening very often at the moment. And Covia is something I can just sit down and, you know, I can just chat to my friends and I can just build in the background. 
have that recorded and obviously the audio isn't kept in so then I can just sit down for 10-15 minutes and do a voiceover after which I'm going to take a lot more easy. I used to refine the voiceovers a hell of a lot more but as you can probably tell in this one I'm just taking it easy. I am cutting out the long pauses because I, I have a lot of long pauses. I can't talk for, for like ages. I have to think about what I'm going to say sometimes. But yeah anyway point of what I was trying to say is the two series is Below Zero Covia. We're just going to work on them whenever I feel like it. I'm not going to stick to any schedule whatsoever. At least until I'm more in the flow of doing my work and stuff like that. Like I said, I am in uni now and so far the workload has been a lot higher than it was last year. Which means all around I'm going to have less time to spend on YouTube. And I'm going away for two weeks in December. And recently I've had to be sorting out, because I didn't have a passport, uh, insurance cards, whatever the hell else. I've had to sort out like a bunch of stuff to go on this volunteering project. I'm really excited for it. But yeah, I'm going to be going away for two weeks in December to do that. So that'll probably be a period without any videos. And chances are when I get back, I'll have tons of work to catch up on. So it'll probably be a month total without the videos. I don't know. And once Below Zero is over, which I mean, I want to get it over as quick as possible because I really want to start playing the game again. Although, you know, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to do that because, <laughs> wow, this is a really awful video. I, I do not know what I'm saying at all. I'm just going to rant on. Hopefully you're enjoying it. You're probably not. Anyway, because I got the new PC, Below Zero actually stopped doing cloud-based storage for your saves. So I'm going to have to, at some point, plug in my old PC, grab the save file of my Simulator Below Zero series, upload it to probably Mega. That's what I normally use and then hopefully download it on my new PC, shove it in the folder, and hopefully it will work. If not, then the series is probably over, but I can't promise that yet, so hopefully it's not. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure it's not over, because I love that series and I want to see it finished. But if that works and I do get to continue the series, I am going to let you guys pick the game out of few options that I play next, probably alongside Kobia as well. It will be a list of games that I really want to play. I'm not going to tell you what any of those games are yet, but if you want to vote on that, you're going to have to join my Discord, so please join the Discord. You'll get uh, notifications whenever a video goes up, and especially because I'm not using a schedule, that's going to be very useful. But yeah, I, I mean, there's so many games I want to play right now and I honestly cannot decide on what to make a series for. So yeah, I'm just going to let you guys decide, but that's very far future. It probably won't be till next year. In fact, it probably won't be until like February or March next year. So yeah, it's a long time away, but after you've done Below Zero, you guys are going to get to do the series out of a list of things. Anyway, I've run it on for way too long. I just bonked my mic, sorry. So the time loss has been over for ages, so... Hopefully there's been something cool in the background, I don't really know. But I'm going to go into a real-time part in the Covia save right now to show you guys all the stuff that I've built, which is a bloody lot by the way, just nothing that significant. But yeah, I will see you in just a few seconds in the real-time part. Let's go now. Alright, so we are finally back in the Covia save for the first time in four or five... No, it's probably about six months. It's very sad. Real quick before I give you guys a tour of everything that I've changed, which is really quite a bit, I want to just say if there are any video glitches in this, don't worry, I am going to try sort them. This is the first time I've recorded on the new PC, so issues might happen. If there's anything severe, I will just redo this recording. I mean, it's not going to take long, so it's no big deal. But yeah, if there's a couple little weird glitches, then... Don't mind that, I will get it fixed, and we should be all good after that. So, we should probably get ourselves down to the storage facility, which you guys have just seen me build a tiny bit of. And as you can see, a hell of a lot has changed from the time lapse that you guys saw. Really, I probably should have recorded more of it, because you guys just had some some not below zero background stuff, and that's not really related to Kobe what we're doing today, but hey. So I probably could have recorded more of this, but it doesn't really matter. So we've got three storage units. This one is quite special, I'll explain that here in a minute. But we can go down into this unit, we've used some of the new barriers that were added in a recent update. We've even got security cameras and lights and all that stuff kind of dotted around and this is like a metal gate that would lower down and obviously close it up. Inside here we just have a bunch of random stuff basically. This is literally just a storage facility, somewhere to keep decorations and keep items, whatever. This one is actually pretty empty. We also have these little storage things for logs which I built and we've got a truck going out with a bunch of penguin decorations as if they're going to build a new habitat or something like that. This one has a hell of a lot more stuff, lots of tiny decorations going on, a bunch of with stuff like this. We got a bunch of statues on the right, enrichment items here in the middle, and that's about it. Like I said, this just wouldn't have been that amazing to put in a time lapse, so it doesn't really matter to me. All the vehicles and stuff here were not made by me, by the way. I want to make that very clear. None of the vehicles here were made by me. Not the vans, not the diggers, not anything. And I'm going to put some credits to basically every blueprint item from the workshop that I've used in Covia so far. I mean, I don't think I used any until 
until we stop making videos on it. So yeah, I will try to make sure you guys are all updated on that, just to give credit where credit's due. But here we have the food prep room. You can imagine a zoo food truck pulls up here, refuels whilst you're unloading it, and then someone can wheelbarrow the stuff into here or carry it or whatever. And you can see we've got the food prep on the side there. And this actually uses Gaven barriers, which I thought was a pretty cool trick. And then you've just got like a window up the top there. We've got this, which is pretty much my new favorite plant, the Virginia creeper. And eventually we'll go around the back of here and change all that stuff up but for now I thought there was no point decorating it because I don't really know what I'm going to do with this area yet and the entrance to this whole utility area is right here you could close this gate if you wanted to and you've got no vehicles over five meters high whether it's five meters or not I don't really know and that's because this leads over to the car park we've got a little staff car park here which looks all around pretty plain but still pretty good and to stop guests from walking over here we have this little thing which Looks a little bit stupid, but it covers up a staff path, which is really the main goal of it. So no guests are going to walk down here towards the staff area. And that's coming from right here, which is the edge of the zoo. The guests spawn here now, where it's like a gravel path leading through the jungle. You see deliveries this way, visitors this way. It should be all good. You've got one really big parking area and all around, I mean, the car park's still kind of small, but I think it's big enough for what this part of the zoo is. We might end up making a completely other entrance. I know it's been a while, but I still want to do that. This is the kind of original Covia and then eventually off on probably the other side of the zoo we'll have a more modernistic Covia style. So this might not be a car park that's actually in useful stop by the time we finish the zoo. But yeah we got this big area for any old cars, we got this area for disabled parking and we've got this area for bus parking which is probably my favourite one. A few little walkways to get across from car park to car park and then of course you've got the three ways leading straight up to the entrance. My other favourite plan is the elephant grass now. I've kind of spammed it around everywhere and it is giving the zoo some lag now even with my new pc but i mean look at this section here just you know it's just plants nothing special but if i go ahead and select these groups of elephant grass and delete them it looks so much worse does it not like the elephant grass does so much for it so honestly i'm gonna take the lag although I will probably have to, you know, rein it back on using the elephant grass, which is exactly what you guys are going to see here. I've completely redone a lot of the uh, elephant and rhino habitat, and I think it gives this habitat so much more life. It just makes it look like an actual jungle. Whereas before, like this entire area, imagine, again, imagine it without the elephant grass. It was just super open and super plain, and I thought it was really boring, so I added the elephant grass to try help that. And this side of the river here, just this little section, is probably my favourite. Just because it's so overgrown and the elephants can still get over here, but odds are they won't. And I've started using the tops of these ponytail palm trees and burying them in the rocks because they look like little ferns. Or not really ferns, I don't know what word you'd use for them. But they're kind of buried in the rocks like that. And this little one which doesn't have a unit sign and is closed off and everything, it has this little door down here. This is actually going to be a giraffe house. The idea behind this is that there were some giraffes that needed to be rehomed from another zoo and Kovia really didn't have the way to do it but no one else would take the giraffes so Kovia decided to convert one of their storage facilities and we're going to have the inside of here as a kind of off show giraffe house just where they go in at night and eventually we'll poke a big hole in this wall so the giraffes can walk out into a big field for them here because this is going to be our safari section to the zoo. Safari might not be the right word but this is where we're going to keep a lot of African animals so we're going to have giraffes here and I don't know lions, wild dogs, whatever else they're all going to be kept in this general area and I'm going to try to keep to the vulnerable or endangered type thing that obviously Kobia is all centered around. And directly to the right of the entrance here, once you go in you've got the guardrails in front, elephants to the left, off to the right here you'll have a tiny little Adabra tortoise habitat which is probably what we're going to build in the next episode. It's going to be a relatively small little habitat, in fact I could probably make it smaller than this, but I think this is an alright size because as you can see Adabra tortoises live on an island right outside of Africa. It's pretty much the best small animal that is still wanting to be included in Kobia as they are vulnerable so that's what I've decided to put there and I've made a tiny little start on the barrier here but the next changes are in the market street right here which I'm much much happier with now than I was before I've just made a few changes that seem to bring it more to life and especially when we make this path down here go off in different directions and we've got stuff built up there it'll feel a lot less open which is the entire point and you might have noticed this is now a capuchin walk and that's because the lemurs kind of belong in Madagascar in my opinion well they literally do belong to Madagascar they are literally 
actually from the island of Madagascar, but what I mean is Madagascar is an African island, so they probably belong in the African safari area. I don't know what I'm gonna do with their habitat yet, I haven't really thought about that stuff in general, but the capuchin walk makes a lot more sense because capuchins are South American monkeys, so I decided to make this walk for them instead. We've also got a whole bunch of new shops, or not really shops, I've kind of just branded the ones that we already had, and they don't function at all, but I just thought it was a cool way to bring in some other people to the project. So we've got these on a little post-it board, but I will give you guys a better look at the actual shops. We've got Wei Chi's Native Freshwater Fish, which is a reference to the mega aquarium streams that we used to do on the old channel. We've just got some nice signs for some South American fish, like Discus, Angelfish, and Tetras. And over on the other side, we've just got this as well, with a couple extra things. And the alligator snapping turtle is still here, which I still love. This shop right here is Mystic's Musical Antiques, where you could buy stuff like didgeridoos, sitars, steel drums, maracas, bongos, etc. All sort of, at least from where I'm sat, kind of weird instruments from lots of different countries. So kind of trying to get people to know different cultures, which is what this Market Street is all about. It's supposed to be a hodgepodge of different cultures and different architecture and stuff like that all in one little market street. And here we have what's at least my favourite signs, Super Dupes Pottery and Painting Studio. Awful accent, yes, but the idea is that you can go in here and paint little wooden trinkets like this or pottery like this and you can just chill out instead of walking around the zoo constantly because let's be honest your legs would get pretty tired. So I think that's really cool and I'll talk about this bridge in a minute but we also have some of this stuff up here. So my imagining with the ones that are hung up here is that the people People who originally funded Covia or people who have donated large sums of money get to come down here, get to paint one of these and he gets hung up on the tree which I think is really neat. And of course a zoo like this would need donation money pretty much regardless because it's all about conservation, it's all about giving animals the welfare that they deserve so people who donate large sums of money definitely need at least something like this to say thank you. And all around I think it looks really cool hanging off the tree so you know there's that too. We will go into the Capuchin walkabout in just a second but I also want to show off this little bridge that we've built going over the river and I've got to be honest I'm actually really happy with it I think it turned out great it's got a nice little shape and this is where a massive building I honestly can't remember if I've talked about it but we're gonna have a big old building with a bunch of habitats in there so this will kind of lead directly into it which I think is gonna be really nice but I will stop wasting your time and hop into John Helms nope I will hop into Tejid Cam that is now your new name and take a look through the Capuchin walkabout which not a lot has changed except for the fact that it looks 10 million times better there's not a whole lot to talk about other than the fact that we've got fences towards the edge now. We've got lots of different plants you can see. We are using a lot of elephant grass because I love it. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, I'm just really happy with it. I've definitely managed to fill the space a lot better. We've got a couple of these little shelters which I thought would be too low but they actually aren't. They're kind of the perfect height to stand under. We've got a couple of these climbing frames dotted around, which I'm really happy with. I'm terrible at building climbing frames, but I think these ones look pretty good. Then you can walk up over onto this little viewing area where you can look out over the whole habitat and the lovely box monkeys, let's do that. But you can take a look over the path that's right below you, some more climbing structures, the building that they sleep in. We've got a nice little water area here and an island that they can actually get across. They don't swim, but I think they can jump across the lilies just about good enough. So you can see he's actually just walking on the plants. He's not technically swimming, so they can make it across to the island, which I think is pretty nice. But yeah, just overall, I think the plants in this habitat look so much nicer. It looked so bare before and I really didn't like it. I mean, this is the last thing that we built before taking a from Covia so it kind of shows that I didn't put as much effort into it. I wanted to but I just I guess I just didn't but we have got a much nicer entrance for the keepers here. I built a little tire swing there which was fairly simple. We've got these signs dotted around all over the place. You can get a look down towards the river with a couple enrichment items and if I oh no how do I get back down? Can I get back down? All right, well, I'm stuck. Let's just fly around instead then. If you go inside here, wow, there's a lot of monkeys just right here. But if you do that, we've got a nice little sleeping area, which I have upgraded a lot. We've got a little area down here. We've got some ropes to hang on or do whatever, some hammocks, some more sleeping area. And then you can go up this little walkway to more sleeping area, which will be a bit cooler because of course we've got this draft. But you can wrap around here, take a look at this other little area, which I think looks really cool as well. Walking along here, we've got some logs on the side. We've got lots of plantage. We've got another little shelter here. And just like that, you are out of the capuchin habitat. So I think it's a massive upgrade. I wish I took a before and after picture from like the exact same thing from the exact same angle I mean, but I didn't do that so it's a rip. There's just a couple other little things that I want to show you guys before we go. This little section of barrier here is kind of planning out the rough outline of a red panda habitat and over here we've got some slight little changes to our pirate deck. We do need to make up the buildings here but I just haven't done that yet because I wanted to do that on video. We've got a rough outline of where the 
We've got a rough outline of where the buildings will be and this will be a whole proper eating area where you can sit down and have an actual meal because this is going to be an actual restaurant. And with the small amount of stuff I've done here you can kind of get the vibe of what it's supposed to be like with some barrels which are from the workshop that'll be in the description and just some nice ropes around some overgrown stuff on a trellis and all of that good stuff. So I think that is about all I had to show you guys. It was a lot I know and it was a lot of just talking and pointing but hopefully soon we'll be back with proper time lapses and proper new builds that I can show you guys and actually be super excited about. Regardless, I do hope you guys enjoyed the builds for today and I hope you're excited that we are back in Covia and back on YouTube in general because I really am. I cannot wait to start building on this zoo again. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. I am going to try to make these videos fairly regularly but like I said, I'm not sticking to a strict schedule. So thank you for watching. If you did happen to enjoy this hodgepodge of a video, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, suggestions or anything like that. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.